Welcome to another exciting episode of Cars with Big Boy Trev. I am Big Boy Trev and today we have something amazing courtesy of the brand with the three diamonds right from Japan. Introducing to you the Mitsubishi Outlander. But first things first, let's check out the highlights of today's show. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we head out all the way to Japan to sample Mitsubishi's latest variant of its tough and reliable Outlander soft roader. We check out its bold styling, coffee interior, punchy engine mated to one of the best 4x4 systems ever built, the Super Select with Invex 3, and then give you value for money as to why it is the best soft roader in the business. Catch this and much, much more only on Cars with Big Boy Trev. This is the key to Mitsubishi's premier soft roader, the Mitsubishi Outlander. And with prices starting at Kenya shillings 4.25 million plus VAT, do you reckon it's the best soft roader in the business? We're going to find out with this review. But first things first, let's check out the front profile. Now, as you can see on this front profile, it has that Mitsubishi signature design theme, the cheetah eye that you've also seen on the Mitsubishi Eclipse and, of course, the Pajero Sport that we reviewed earlier on on Kazi Big Boy Trev. Of course, with this chrome output on the grille, on the three diamonds that signifies Mitsubishi, and the piano black finish also gives this car a premium look and feel. Hence, my wording for today, the premier soft roader for Mitsubishi. So, as you can see again, on the lower part, lower lip of the bumper, again denoting performance and style, courtesy of the Mitsubishi design team. Now, as you move across, this is where the Mitsubishi design team comes through. And as you can see, it's got upright sides to accommodate seven people inside the cabin. Not only that, you have lower hip line to allow the windows to have more air and more light into the cabin, making it a very good space for your family, especially if you're traveling on full throttle. Again, some that I've noted again, not too much creases on the doors, but as you can see, the side cutting has some uh, stainless steel trim just to give it that Jeanne Secoua that we keep on talking about. And of course, as you move towards the side, you can still see the scuffing going all the way around to the lower part of the bumper. Also, you that it's an off-road vehicle and of course, it has a bit of style. At the back, as you can see, you have quadratic lights that are wrap around also, denoting style and signature. That is something you probably find on the likes of the Colios and of course, the Volkswagen Tiguan all space, which we're going to reveal much later on. Of course, this chrome tip and the Mitsubishi on the rear panel gives this car that you know, premium look and feel. And not only that, you can see the edging of the design of the rear window towards the tailgate. Again, time to infuse two design themes into one, making it a sporty yet practical soft roader. But the question is, how practical is the cabin? We need to find out. Let's jump in and see what the Outlander is made of. So guys, you've seen from the walk around the design phase of this particular car. Mitsubishi have really tried to enhance the looks of the different variations of the Mitsubishi brands along the stable. Now it's time to find out if this particular Outlander still leads to the expectation that it is a premier soft roader in the Mitsubishi stable. So step inside and see what the cabin is all about. Now as you can see, Mitsubishi have also gone for the forward design phase of the cabin where basically the dashboard is designed far away to create an impression and illusion of space for the front passengers. Good legroom is amazing and of course give you that vision that you need to see at the end of the bonnet. Now if you look at the dashboard, it's a simplistic design, not too fancy but I can tell you with the use of the soft plastic and of course stitched leather on the dash, I can tell you for a fact premiumness is oozing there is a strip that goes around the center console it is stainless steel also giving that genre sequence the first thing you do see is this audio visual system courtesy of rockford foskett for those who do not know rockford foskett this uh, premier american company that builds audio visual units and of course it has a lot of sound to boot which you're going to try out right now so i'm going to switch it on right now i can tell you you guys, I can tell you from the thumping bass and treble, this car is not playing. It's got eight speakers plus one subwoofer, a total of 600 watts courtesy of Rockford Foskett. And that sound is just but amazing. Now, how do you listen to sound? You can actually have Bluetooth connectivity, USB connectivity, and even a CD. You can actually load it. It's a top load design, so you can actually load it and you're able to listen to your tunes in crystal clear clarity that you so desire. 
Well, apart from that, this particular vehicle has an audio system, radio, and of course, vehicle dynamics that comes as standard within this Rockford Force Gate system. And remember, the design is finished with a piano black finish just to give it that genesis we keep on talking about. Now, Rabiloid is the dual zone climate control system that varies the air in the cabin. Moving over to the gearbox console, as you can see, premiumness is the name of the game. Piano black finish finished out with stainless steel trim, again giving this car premium look. The gator shift gearbox also with the same treatment and of course the full drive button that varies traction at given situations again. It's circular with the chrome uh, finish giving it this car again premiumness, premium, premium, premium. Of course they've tried to reduce the number of buttons and spaces including the traditional handbrake. Now you have a start, stop and a, an automatic handbrake with heel load assist just to ensure that you remain safe while on the road. And then of course being the top spec of this particular derivative you have heated seats center console as you can see here plenty of cubby holes and spaces here you have a 12 volt socket and a usb port to connect and charge your devices depending on what you want and if you're a person with an iphone you have an auxiliary port as well to plug in your iphone and listen to the tunes courtesy of that system now moving over to the instrument binnacle again it's hidden, it's dark, and of course it has the traditional Mitsubishi italics, where visibility is the name of the game. It's black on white hue, so it has good visibility, and of course at night it turns up into a white hue, so that making it warm and of course pleasurable while driving at night. Again in the middle you do have a monochrome display that houses a trip computer, it will give you range, it will give you the odometer reading and many other functionalities of the car. Left hand side tachometer, right hand side of course the speedometer. And you can vary even the light of the instrument binnacle. How amazing is that? I'm moving out to the steering wheel, three spoke leather, and of course, it has a piano black and chrome finish. Left hand side, you control every aspect of this audio system. On the right hand side, cruise control functionality, and not forgetting the devil horns. It allows you to toggle through the different gear settings without taking your hands off the wheel. And of course, explore the full potential of that 2.4 liter engine that has a lot of power and torque. We're gonna sample out much, much later. As you can see, Big boy is comfortable, leather seats are very supportive and firm and they are perforated. The leather quality is amazing and of course you can adjust these seats uh, eight different ways. It doesn't have memory seating but it is flexible enough to fit any profile. It's, uh, for myself, I'm very comfortable, I'm six foot one. I can adjust the seat based on my preference and including the steering wheel as well where I can do a tilt or telescopic functionality to ensure that I'm very comfortable when piloting this particular car. Now that's a third of the story, let's go to the back and see what the second and third row sitting is all about, the boot space and then we go on the road and see if this Outlander is the best soft roader in the Kenyan market. So guys, moving at the back as you can see, the cabin is quite spacious. I am 6 foot 1 and right now I'm sitting on the first row and I can tell you there's just more than enough leg room for me because I'm a big person and even the headroom and of course because it has a sunroof, it has a reduced headroom simply because of this system and that it's standing for any normal person it's actually a very good space to be in you actually have three seats the sculpted and of course there's plenty of space and this being a four-wheel drive in fact one thing that i like is that the transmission tunnel is well also you can actually have somebody sitting there in the middle quite comfortably and of course if there's no one then you can retract the armrests and you can have long journeys while enjoying this outlander there are two cup holders for the two passengers over here and of course you have isofix which comes as standard so that when you're securing your baby seat your baby remains safe while in the outlander obviously of course it has cut in airbags there are six of them and extends all the way to the rear seat the five plus two seating and that keeps all your family safe during any form of an accident very very important but of course you know the main challenge the main item for safety is the safety belt make sure you belt up especially during this christmas season now as you can see i have good space but this seats also very flexible 60 40 to allow accommodation of large or irregular objects within the cabin and of course once you take on the second seat put it down then you have massive space so let's check out the second seating and see how much space it has and then we go to the boot and then we drive out in the Mitsubishi Outlander. So moving over to the back and opening you can see a massive space over 430 liters of boot space in this particular car and you can increase it depending on the size of the load. However this being a 5 plus 2 if you have maybe more passengers maybe more kids you need to transport in this particular car then you're able to raise the two rear seats. So basically you pull the two toggles together revealing two seats that can accommodate two average-sized children. 
I can't fit there. However, my colleagues were very pleasant to give themselves as a dummy and they actually can see they can fit quite comfortably in this particular car. And even on that setting, you do have quite a number of things. You do have a USB port and cup holders that comes as standard on this particular car. And then if you want to take it down, you just pull the toggles again and they lie flat so that you're able to push in stuff quite easily without stress. That is the practicality aspect of this particular car. Plenty of space uh, tethers and of course you do have stuff to keep in and even right here you can actually have a space where you can actually hide some valuables when you're traveling on full load. That said, it's time to drive this car and feel the Myvek engine that is in the Mitsubishi Outland and then you're going to go off-road, give you value for money proposition as to why it is the best premium soft roader in the business. Stay tuned. This week on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we discussed luxury vehicles in the used car market. Here are our top picks for the best luxury grey imports in Kenya. Starting off with the Range Rover Sport, this car represents the best of both worlds. We spoke British luxury on the road and legendary four-wheel drive capability off the road. Its terrain response system will help even the most inexperienced drivers tackle the toughest terrain. And back on the familiar tarmac, the Range Rover transforms into an on-road beast with up to 500 horsepower. The steering is beefed up for better control, the throttle gets sharper for faster acceleration, and quicker gear shifts allow you to explore the full potential of this vehicle. With prices starting at about 5 million shillings, the Range Rover Sport is a great pick. However, potential buyers may need to be on the lookout for potential reliability issues. Moving on to the Toyota Land Cruiser, its tried and tested formula has made it a formidable opponent to its rivals. It thrives where there's poor road infrastructure and its hardy chassis and suspension is able to cope with severe conditions without breaking down. It has some decent comfort levels, a reliable engine and great resale value. With prices starting at about 5 million shillings, it's one of the best buys you can get if you're looking for an affordable and reliable luxury mobility solution. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class is the standard upon which luxury cars are measured. For decades, Mercedes has earned its reputation as a luxury car builder with a long line of excellent vehicles. The company invests billions of euros in research and development and comes up with features that lead every segment it's in. And it's not just luxury they're known for. Mercedes pioneered the safety passenger cell in 1959, anti-sway bars in the early 60s, anti-lock braking in 1986, airbags in 1978, and ESP in 1996. The list goes on and on, highlighting the fact that Mercedes-Benz makes not only the most luxurious cars in the market, but some of the safest as well. The most popular import is the S350, powered by a V6 petrol engine. The cabin is luxurious, it's packed with technology, and that V6 is more than adequate when you put your foot down. With prices starting at 4 million, it's a great pick for a luxury car. So guys, now we are in the cabin of the Mitsubishi Outland, and I can tell you, it still has that sporting DNA that Mitsubishi has had for many, many years. Because as you know, Mitsubishi have been contenders in the World Rally Championship, and of course the Paris Dakar where quite a number of the technologies are now part and parcel of this particular vehicle. So let's start with the engine. Now basically what this engine has is a brand new engine by Mitsubishi 2.4 liter petrol 16 valve with multi-point fuel injection and a technology called MIVEC. MIVEC which stands for Mitsubishi Intelligent Variable Valve Timing Electronic Control System varies the way the valves open and close at different intervals to allow you to have very good low-end torque and of course higher response and better fuel economy especially in traffic now on full gas and on sport mode this particular car will accelerate from 0 to 100 in under 10 seconds considering it's listen to that pulls and pulls and that Mivec technology has made Mitsubishi very very competitive in all disciplines of sport and I can tell you the responsiveness and sharpness is amazing now all that power is sent to the four poles courtesy of a six-speed CVT 
Now, that gearbox allows you to explore the full potential of this Mitsubishi engine and of course returns a fuel consumption figure of 9 liters per 100 kilometers on a combined cycle. Remember, this varies with the weight of the vehicle, how you drive and many other factors. Again, that is so important because in the SUV world, most of the buyers want style, comfort, practicality, performance, efficiency, all in that package. So having the right mix and making sure that you have good fuel efficiency, the CVT option is actually the best. Now, we know how it performs. It's very good on tarmac. The chassis, again, comes from Mitsubishi's modular architecture that you probably find it on the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and many others that are in the stable. Now, this chassis is very sturdy and also impacts a lot when it comes to safety. Up front, you do have McPherson struts. At the back, you have multi-link coil suspension that not only gives you superb ride comfort on tarmac, but also during off-road with a long stroke setting, makes this car very comfortable and very capable off-road with the four-wheel drive system, the Invex 3 system. Now, speaking of safety, we have quite a number of items that make this car very safe. So from active uh, features, including ABS, ESP, stability control, all this up together, tandem to make sure that you remain out of harm's way. But in case all hell breaks loose, you can rely on the six airbags that come as standard in this particular vehicle. And of course, the safety belt and a five-star crash safety cell that dissipates impact energy away from the cabin cell making sure that you remain safe at any given time. That's the rise philosophy courtesy of Mitsubishi. Now, that said, I've driven this car. It feels good. It's comfortable. It's quiet. The noise, vibration, and harshness is amazing. And it's time to see if it can do a little bit of off-roading. It's not a full-on Mitsubishi Pajero Sport or Pajero, but it can handle the Maram quite easily. So we're going to just venture out out of the tarmac and get into some Maram and see what the Invex 3 four-wheel drive system is all about. Courtesy of cars with Big Boy Trev. So guys, we've just ventured off tarmac into Amaram section. and are just about to sample the four-wheel drive system of this Mitsubishi Outlander. Remember I mentioned earlier that the Mitsubishi Outlander comes from a family where their 4x4 heritage and capabilities are known from the Paris Dakar to the World Rally Championship. Now, this particular system called the Invex 3 transmission foil drive system basically varies the amount of torque between axles to ensure that you have maximum grip at any given surface. So for today, we're going to see how this thing works on this particular Outlander. So the first thing I will do because I'm in a Maram surface, I will switch on the button. It has three settings. It has foil drive eco, foil drive auto, and of course, foil drive lock. That is low range. So for the, because on high, we've been on eco, foil drive eco, Basically, it's the front wheels that are running. And then on auto, it's a four wheels, so it's four high. So there's maximum grip and traction on that surface. So we're gonna just click that and then see what this transmission does. Now off we go. Now one thing that I do notice about this particular car is the fact that there is very minimum slip courtesy of this Invex 3 transmission. Now it, it uses wheel sensors to ensure that there is no wheel that has any loss of grip. And if there's any, then the system will basically sensor and slow down the wheel that is slipping to ensure that you regain traction at any given time. And remember, when you're doing a bit of off-roading, it's always good to map out your course. So this course that we are in is full of rats. So ground clearance comes in good play, over 210 millimeters, standard on this particular vehicle. And of course, the long stroke suspension, front McPherson's and rear multi-link suspension ensures that the passengers get a good ride, especially when they're doing some off-road surfaces. And of course, in case you need to, you know, just have that off-roading capability, then the Invex 3 kicks in to ensure that you have no slip. So basically, this car feels very good. Um, the suspension travel is good. It's not too much. You don't feel as if you are going over boulders or anything. So it tries to level out the vehicle so that you have maximum comfort. And even the traction as it's not slipping at all. There's no place where I've had to accelerate too hard to get out of, you know, a rut. It does very well. And remember also Kenya, because we are a country where rain is prominent. Again, wheel slip is so important. In that case, you will switch on the four wheel drive lock, which locks the diffs to ensure that there's minimum slip at any given time. 
So basically, that Invex 3 di distributes torque to the wheel that is affected and slows down and makes sure that you have maximum traction at any given time. So, so far, so good. I can tell you, this car actually feels very comfortable. It's like I'm just driving on a modern road, yet it is full of rats and I'm not even afraid of the, you know, the, the ground clearance because it's amazing. The suspension is doing its work absolutely well. The steering is soft and you're able to navigate quite easily without the need of, you know, turning in too much um, and creating something called wheel lock. That said, it's time for me to move over and give you value for money proposition as to why this particular car is the best premium soft roller in the market. Stay tuned. So guys, you've seen what the Mitsubishi Outlander is all about. Style, performance, practicality, safety, and of course, absolute value for money. I know you're wondering how much this car will cost you. Well, on the road, this Mitsubishi Outlander goes for 4.25 million Kenya shillings plus VAT, and it comes with a three-year, 100,000 kilometer warranty, whichever comes first. And of course, you can rely on Siba Colt's extensive network across the country. Kisumu, Nakuru, Mombasa, Nyeri, Nanyuki, they are all that to ensure that your Mitsubishi Outlander works in tip-top condition. I know you're wondering who are the rivals in this segment. I can tell you for a fact, let's start with the big boys. The Toyota RAV4, the Nissan X-Trail, the Hyundai Santa Fe, and many others that are in this particular category. Question is, do you reckon this particular car gives absolute value for money as compared to the rivals? Send your thoughts as seen on the social media notes below. And we'll get back to you next week with all the details. Well, signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. Drive safe and be safe. <laughs>